children of planet Earth. What's up, everybody? Good morning. Good, good, good morning. Hello. Smash a like button, everybody. We're starting off today opening outside DD bands already. Already, markets slated to be random. It's already a sit out day. It's another day like that. It's crazy how we can see those before the market even starts, right? Gotta love it. Buddy, welcome to the show. Had a nice little fun video yesterday on float failure. That was good. Making all new videos. So those of you in the Pro Plus package come to the Zoom calls, you get to see those. Newer updated. More in detail. Zoom calls. We can record them, post them up there for y'all. Mark it up in some one minute. Everybody smash that like button while you can. We'll start our analysis shortly. Jobless claims, uh, initial jobless, continuing jobless, and productivity, non-farm productivities come out.
All right, everybody. All right, guys, one second. You want to smash that like button, we'll get started. Y'all know the rules. When the ratio is 50, I start talking. So, I you know, got one rule. And the, the second rule is after five minutes of market open, if that ratio ain't there, I'm just close the stream down. So, I'm going to count to 10 and close the stream down. Don't make, I love you guys. Don't make me repeat myself. I'm, I got better things to do. Love y'all. There you go. There you go. All right, let's start talking. I'm just debugging the platform. Love y'all. There we go. All right, open outside DD bands, no trade today. Is that all right, guys? Opening outside of ED bands. Um, one thing, let's take a look at. Um, all right, let's look at NQ. We'll be way outside of DD bands today. So, rule is when you're rational in DD bands, um, you don't do anything, or I don't do anything. So, in this particular case, DD band breaks, um, both of these alerts are red. Um, when the alerts are red, I don't trade. So I don't trade outside DD bands. There's literally no trade on the index today. Um, All right, so really nothing. Uh, we'll, we'll have some lessons in a second. Let's let the market just kind of settle out. Liquidity maps not updating today. It's a little odd. Hold on, let me 
to see something real quick. All right. Uh, you don't have irrational rules of features and platform, JK. You have to be in the Pro Plus. There's, um, you have to have the Pro Plus membership. So the new stuff coming forward, we made the announcement back in the day that um, anything new regarding futures and additions after futures is going to be Pro Plus. So we're not making any more changes to the Pro platform. Finally, like essentially as we're building the tool, now we're branching off and creating the two different platforms. That makes sense. So Pro and Pro Plus really had no differences other than education until now. So like essentially we're developing both platforms at once and then Pro is stopping here. So we were doing this a long time ago. Light stopped there with no more additions. And then as we're continuing to go, everything else is Pro Plus. So you're gonna have DD band break. Alerts. Um, risk interval alerts, yellow lines, red lines, strong on your chart, DD bands, strong on your chart. If you have optional data feeds, all that stuff's going to come with the pro plus package. And, uh, if you connect with a broker and get futures data, um, you'll be able to have them drawn on your chart like mine. That makes sense. So, yep, yep. Welcome back, by the way. You should be good, Jay. I'm just thinking of... So if you click on your settings right here... It should, uh... It should have all your stuff. Yeah, so to give futures data, we have one brokerage connection right now. Um, with Edge Clear and CQG. Uh, pro, so there is no three month trial of pro plus the three month trial is only pro. If you click your little icon right here, it will show you that you're in the pro, the pro um, trial. So we don't do a trial of, of pro plus. If you want to do pro plus and you upgrade, then that's how you get it. Maybe that's clear a little confusion there.
So if, uh, ES micro needs to be, uh, it's M-E-S. Probably should add that to the list. Is the liquidity maps not popping up for anybody else or is that just me? So people are noting in the Discord, anytime you go outside of DD Mance or even have float failure, we have float failure again today. Uh, the market's gonna do random things. So everybody sees this right now. Uh, the S&P has initiated what we call float failure. If it touches the lower band with the DD greater than half, then the market's gonna be random from there. As we talked about float failure yesterday, remember the float failure did a random thing, sold off for the most of the day. And today, float failure is rallying. You see how float failure just creates a random thing? On the market now i don't i don't uh, double checking one thing really quick uh could somebody answer a question for me are liquidity maps updating for anyone else or is that just me because mine aren't updating or spy there it is never mind oh i just clicked the refresh and it was there well never mind Yeah, click refresh and it looks like it popped up. Little by little. We had a new release this morning, so that's good. Uh, some of the connection issues that we're, we were dealing with, we fixed. So we're, we're working on updating and optimizing the platform over this next month. This is our current sprint. So I'm excited to finally have a lot of these features um, kind of optimized, which to me is really good. QQQ, let's go. So we have spy on a barrel long up and a hedge pressure possible break. Um, with resilience being positive so that's a great sign um same thing on Q. so let's do the analysis this morning okay this is how you look at it right we know we know that analysis is as follows dd is is higher priority than resilience with higher priority than liquidity map so let's draw the pressures right liquidity map has a resistance from hedge pressure from here to here however with resilience being uh, positive on the s p We'll talk about that in a second. You're going to see a different setup. So NASDAQ resilience being negative. NASDAQ has the design to resi resist half gap, resist hedge pressure. So NASDAQ is likely to resist right there. Now, again, markets are random today because of float failure. Everybody understand that? Y'all want, want to do me a solid type the word random in chat to remind yourself muscle memory. Market is random today. Do not trust anything that you see on a float failure. Once the market breaks structure even loosely, like it just has, the market is going to do random things. So as of breaking DD bands, all of a sudden we're rallying. You see how random that is. And it, yesterday it broke them and then market just plunged. This is how you know to stay away. Not every day is gonna be crazy like this, but these are the days that you just don't have to play, right? And obviously you're not missing out on much. Market's not rallying and you're missing it. Market's just kind of like, drifting lower and you're missing it you're missing a tumultuous volatile market and as a day trader um, the professional side of you is to make money when it makes sense to make money and if you see something that looks great attack it this doesn't look great now it's a gamble and one can always say man i'm missing out you're not missing out on anything every single day is a day trade if you missed out on something you didn't know this my last 10k challenge on youtube i went on a 75 day win streak and that's that was broadcast live. If you were here for the 75 day win streak, it literally fully transparent. You can see everything on the screen. Tell everybody I was here for that and remind people what being picky can do. Imagine right after five days, I was like, whoa, I'm on a streak guys. After 10 days, it was crazy. And after 15 days, that was abnormal. And then, and again, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna do another challenge again. Now we have futures trading. As soon as all this ironed out, we're gonna be trading again uh, on stream. So, Every day, if I'm like, I'm sitting out, I'd sit out. I didn't have a red day until the 76th trading day. 20 days a month to trade. That ends up being three and a half months without a single loss. Now, it doesn't mean that I'm some superhuman or I'm so amazing. That's the best streak I've ever been on in my life. I never went on more than probably 20 days or 15 days. Like, it, streaks are rare. And the fact that it kept going, the crowd on YouTube just exponentially grew as trolls started coming in trying to talk shit to watch me fail. It was great. I loved it. I loved seeing 
everybody see what we did. And this is the early days of Rocket Skier. This is when we saw just the classic app. Okay, S&P resilience positive. S&P resilience is going to imply that we have a hedge pressure break by the way here. The reason I can I went on such a streak is not because I just can predict the stock market. It's impossible. It's because I probably 15 or so, maybe more of those days I set out. It's because I only took things that lined up. I positioned correctly. I sat out when things didn't look good. So today, since resilience out pressure outranks liquidity map, while the liquidity map does show resistance off a of hedge pressure, like so, this is what LM says we're supposed to do. Resilience has that ability to fill the gap because it is higher priority, creates more volume. That is a stronger drive. And with resilience, slightly, we need it above, I like to give it at least 10 when markets are rational. So res greater than 10, we're going to go to there. So normally it's resilience greater than zero. We have an irrational rule. If you watch the videos, it states, if these lights are red, I don't just trade when, when resilience is near zero. Right now being 1.6, it's right on zero. It's not bullish enough for me to be super confident to bet on a hedge pressure break. But if this was like 10 or greater, um, I certainly would. Like it's it's hinting at that. So again, one, one could always take a trade with risk management and just stop out down here. We are outside of DD bands with a float failure. It's a random day anyways. So if I were to trade, I would trade small because it's random and lights are red, float failure. And I could take the hedge pressure break case on a 444 to 446, fill the gaps, 20 points on the S&P. I would close if I got anything at all. I wouldn't even bet that it's a big breakout rally. I would just close out. Once it starts pushing through here, I might even start closing early to be the first one out. Okay. Uh, DD ratio, again, being 0.92, has no interaction with bear zone. It just means the highest we go is wherever the bull zone will be. So it's not a short setup unless you short off a hedge pressure. And again, I would only scalp it from here to here because resilience is not negative. So this is going to be a strong support today. You'll see how this works. Look at that. Done. My analysis is done. <clears throat> I'm not looking at past data. I'm not looking at daily chart, weekly chart, multi time frame components. I don't even have a single technical indicator on my chart and I'm already calling the day. We wanted to simplify what traders do so they can make more complex decisions about how much they bet, where they bet, where they get out. Not what do my indicators say? Let's predict the market with my wiggly squiggly lines on the chart and see if I can do it. And the answer is predict where risk is, predict where your risk is and predict where you want to get in, get out and make a trade plan. Clearly today, irrational markets on hedge pressure breaks. Everybody know what happens when you have hedge pressure breaks. I'm sorry, BD band, BD band breaks, markets are random. So you'll see that while it's breaking here yesterday, it continued to collapse. Today, it popped back above. In the float failure scenario, when this happens, the markets will do random things each time. You couldn't predict that sell off. You could predict this rally today or this opening pop. So you have to understand when the market breaks structure, especially in futures, a lot of this is related to overnight, um, which comes from other other markets. Another thing is that we're coming in really great uh, on some of these numbers here. Um, it's lower than expectation on the non-farm, but it's still... Um, but the quarter over quarter growth is still great for, for non-farm productivity. It's good. It's just not as good as the estimates. Initial jobless claims are down, which means there's not any layoffs going on right now relative to last week. So fewer layoffs. Uh, continuing jobless claims still continue to trend down. People are going back to work against the declining jolts, which means it's a hiring spree. Hiring sprees don't happen in a recession. If companies were feeling the heat, they would be trimming, not adding to their workforce. So again, as the market is pressing towards highs, all the answers are there. And the fundamental side of it, at least for now, Companies aren't laying people off. Initial jobless claims are down. Companies hiring people back. Continuing jobless claims are down with jolts in decline. Those two things equate to keeping the people you have and bringing people back who are unemployed, which stimulates the economy, which again is great. And the productivity number on the, uh, this one right here. Oops, whoopsie. It measures the annualized change in labor efficiency, excluding the farming stuff. 
So are the people we're bringing back to work just sitting on their ass and attending a Zoom call every once in a while and doing nothing like they did, you know, uh, during the days of COVID, you know, back in the day, post COVID, when productivity was practically nothing. This is, this is why people were getting laid off. Remember those waves of layoffs that we had all after 2020, 2021? This is all, all of most of you, no offense, who, who were being paid double your salary to sit at home and watch Netflix and then chime in a Zoom call, a picture of yourself for your actual job you used to do in your office. And all, all of y'all got laid off for the sake of the economy. Thank God, no offense, that was you. But <laughs> we laid off the those folks and it drove wages down. People actually got slapped in the face and said, you know, we're gonna bring inflation down. You want that high wage? Oh, there's other people willing to take your job for a lower wage. As we've laid off a bunch of people the last couple of years, people are starting to get desperate. And after about a year of sitting there collecting unemployment, people are waiting. They're like, can't wait to get back to work. And now they're going to take a lower salary, which shows that the labor market has kind of stabilized where it's no longer a supply of jobs with un with no un with uh, nobody to fill them like post COVID where few people would go back to work. Um, it's the other way around. It's a lot of people needing a job and fewer jobs available um, relative to them. So that drives wages down, which drives inflation down. The CPI has been coming down as, as a result of that. And of course, the Fed has been tapering off their rate hikes. Again, as, as one of the major driving forces of cost push inflation is the cost of production due to wages, um, increasing the cost of raw materials going up. And you can see that all of those came down. Inflation is coming down. And uh, Jay Powell is kind of brilliant for seeing that. And that's exactly what needed to happen. Scare the stock market to where it, it sells off 10%. Nobody start firing people. And essentially their whole shtick is to force and induce a bunch of layoffs and induce a mini recession to bring wages to control. They don't tell you that because it sounds doomy and gloomy, but behind closed doors, they're like, all right, guys, how do we force American companies to lay off 10% of the workforce? All right, round the table. Everyone give me your ideas. Oh, let's go. How about quantity of tightening? That'll scare, that'll scare Wall Street. Oh, yeah. And if we mix that with rate hikes, that'll also create that back-end effect of trying, you know, curbing inflation by destimulating lending. However, it it's more likely to scare Wall Street than it is actually to stimulate lending. Because as you see right now, people are still buying houses and cars and all kinds of stuff at ridiculous interest rates because the banks aren't flinching. And we knew that's going to happen. The Fed can't control cost push inflation with rate hikes, but they can't control perception of the stock market in Wall Street by raising rates because everyone likes to sell when that happens. And therefore, companies now have to reduce their bottom line to get stock prices back up and then they start firing people. Genius level move. This is like chess with your livelihoods, but for the greater good, as we all must say. Can't argue with the greater good. Wasn't that from, a, what was that? Hot Fuzz, when they were talking about that? I remember that movie. The greater good. I love. I love uh, the Cornetto trilogy movies. <laughs> if you saw that, somebody for the greater good. <laughs> if you like that movie, we're best friends. All those the Simon Pegg movies. Yeah. All right. So anyways, we're there. We're in a great place. So data is looking good. <laughs> the murder rate is so low. The accident rate is so high. <laughs> I'm talking about the movie. All right. So we understand that the market is in a kind of just a selling phase. I think we're burning theta right now. Let's analyze a monthly map on SPY really quick and see what it looks like now. As you see, while we were building some strength in the bull side, that bull side is actually starting to deteriorate. So my initial thought is that this could be possibly the high of the year is probably correct. I don't think we're going to get the rally we want to see. So unfortunately, monthly maps are not agreeing with a stronger bull market, but it's not necessarily bearish yet where we are. You see how we're still outside of bear territory and still not so bullish. Um, so diagnosis is in. Um, unless something happens tomorrow or today where bull zones start to step back in, the market does not have any more bullishness to it. Look at this. The bull pressure ends now, tomorrow. Where's the market in here? 
neither bullish nor bearish. Now, if you could put a letter to this when you're in this no man's land, it's actually mean reverting uh, because it's it's not bearish and it's not bullish at the same time. So the condition as MR, it's the same thing that happens if you have like a liquidity map, like a bear liquidity map and no bull zone above it. What happens if it breaks out of bear and pops up here? We don't call it bullish. We call it mean reversion, just like you would have a bull zone at infinity. So in the case that we create is that Imagine you have bull zones way up here at infinity and there's no bull zone above. So therefore it's a giant mean reversion, which means the market uh, is indeterminable because we don't know how much, we don't know when it's bullish. We do know when it can be bearish. We don't know the volatility because we don't know. We have to assume infinite volatility because there's infinite space there. So it's impossible to determine, which is bad. Um, indeterminable volatility means you're kind of in this no man's land. So predicting forward, I don't, I, the, mar the bull market's probably done uh, for a little bit until things change. We have expiration next Friday, day after tomorrow, uh, week after tomorrow. So we'll see if that changes things again. But as you see, everybody see the monthly maps? Hope is a terrible drug and it has not recovered since the fish slap. Now, it doesn't mean that we won't be bullish at some other point. It doesn't mean the market's going to collapse either, but it does mean that the market is likely topped for the year. You all see that? Um, we can go ahead and make the case for that. And I always want to make sure I get my call outs on these. Up to Twitter. So I did say we'd likely double top whenever we had the Fitch slap thing happen. So now we're sitting here um, dealing with those types of, uh, reactions and the market is just not cleaning up, but it's not flipping bearish either. So it's like, we're still stuck in a deep bull territory because people were so hard, hardly bullish or hard. They were bullish so hard that the market's just receiving those residual effects and we were trading well about monthly hedge pressure. DD is still positive. Those tech stocks pushed so high into bull zones. So it's going to be hard to see the market deteriorate quickly even though it's likely deteriorating as you see right it's going to take what, what this does tell you it's going to take a long time to unravel it's not going to be a collapse or crash another another thing to go with that's the vix is surprisingly low despite some selling off i mean VIX futures are still trading at 16 the forward curve a few months out is still flat so there's not anticipating a volatile market so it's likely to chop and hold probably in this mean reverting area rather than rally or sell off. It's probably going to burn premium on both sides for a while. I think that's more likely to happen. You're having trouble reading monthly maps. There's now a cheat sheet for you to read monthly maps. Right. Um, go to platform features. Are you guys anything y'all want me to look at or go over real quick? Let me know. Our company has now expanded to its 25th team member as of this last week. So great to be like a huge family here. You guys don't get to meet most of them, but y'all get to see a lot of them. Here's your monthly maps. This will teach you each one of them. There should be no trouble buying tech. This is literally, I, re I repeat this on a daily basis. These are the things when I read it. So we broke it down into pieces for you. What happened to bull zones? What happened to bear zones? What happens if they're pulling apart, pinching together? Do you got it? Super duper. All right. Moon Chi. Let's see what we got. Mean reverting, uh, no play on that. Boil. Oops. Uh, this one has that resistance as well. So not bullish, either, either flat to down on these two for sure. All right. That would be fun to, to, to do my futures trading challenge in edge clear in a bearish ish market that'd be fun there's a lot of sit out days when it comes comes with those 
Like, you have to know that when I choose to sit out, it's because I'm just being smart. And trust me when I say, during that challenge, I think I, I it was like, I think I, started, I can't remember what I started off with. I think it was like 6,700 bucks, whatever the margin requirement was for the S&P. I divided it by two, and I said, this is where we're going to start. And I just started trading micros, and I trade up the minis, and that, by the very last day of that stream, and this is before we were, that time we were working on releasing this app. That's the, the first app, the classic app that we have, way before we had the platform. And then when we got to like releasing this and doing that, this got too over, just like now, it's like too overwhelming to do, to, to run a company, to reduce a platform, to bug the plat, debug the platform. Uh, trade Trading challenge as we were like going viral and like we're getting literally our streams are having like thousands of people watch them. And just it was like crazy and, and lots of lots of just energy and it was fun and then like i just had to kind of focus on the platform the very last day i streamed the the, the account was at a high so it started at 6700 bucks and the very last day i streamed the account was at like 80, 80 high 80s thousand i think it peaked at like ninety five thousand somewhere in there and that's that particular last day so 6700 traded almost to 100k live on stream over the course of like a nine month period. And that's what I did on my trading challenge. And most of those days weren't just jump in and yield along. I used my risk management rules. I used my position sizing rules, the ones we teach in the Pro Plus classes. I use my, I use only S&P futures, sometimes NASDAQ, but mostly S&P. Um, just sat out when things look bad, like a day like this, I wake up and go, oh, DD float failure, sit out. And then we'd have DD bands at the time, but we had risk interval rules that were slightly similar, but the DD band is a little more structured and, and easy to see so like hedge pressure breaks i would sit out um now that we have better rules even more or sorry more rules um i'm curious to see if i can perform even better i do not trade futures overnight trading futures overnight or us futures overnight trading us futures overnight is a fool's errand it is not something anyone should do and i'll tell you why don't let me tell you why you tell yourself why Here's when the market opens, and here's what it does from, this is 6 p.m. Eastern. And then here's what it's doing at 11 Eastern. There, you, you wanna commit five hours of your life for five points a chop. Don't think about how that's gonna affect you. I'll answer that question. Do you have a wife, Rowan, kids, or husband, family, dogs, friends, hobbies, any of that? Um, Ask them what they think of you committing five hours of your life to barely moving nonsense. Staring at your phone while you should be at the dinner table talking to your partner, you know, sitting on your ass when you should be walking to keep your blood pressure low. The point I'm making is in the overnight, it's a great question. I love when people ask that. Overnight, for anybody, the market's... The stock market's closed and the US stock market is closed. So futures aren't going to move until other markets open. So, you know, right here you have Asian markets open. So Australia and New Zealand markets open here, but they don't really affect our markets that much. Asia, kind of. Um, Europe, kind of. So at the at the turn of the morning, this is when the European markets open. So you're not even going to get movement most of the time, at least for the first two hours until Japan opens and China opens an hour later. And then after midnight depending on daylight savings time, one or two in the morning, my time, which is I'm central, so two or three in the morning, European markets open, and then they start to move. So then you're trading until three, four in the morning. To get, you know, 15, 20 points, you're committed to nine, 10 hours of your life, and you don't get a good night's sleep. And you can wake up in the morning and get 15 or 20 points in 15 or 20 minutes. So 15 minutes, to get 15 points or nine hours to get 15 points. With the stock market being closed, you don't have liquidity maps and other things to guide you. As a matter of fact, in the nighttime, our futures are only moving because of the other markets around the world. So now not only are you watching other markets around the world, having to study what's going on in Japan and China and Germany and England, and London, all these different exchanges are open. You have to also know the ge geopolitical climate and their economic situation over there too, because their markets are selling off, not because our interest rates are high or because we're in a period of inflation, you got to also study those countries. So when you're trading in U.S. hours, just care about what's going on in the U.S. and our things. Well, if you're trading between 6 p.m. And, and midnight, well, now you got to be an expert in Japan's economy and China's economy. 
I'm going to trade after midnight. Oh, now you'd be an, you have an expert in all of Europe. EU, London itself. And so now you're studying three different sets of central banks. And now you're studying three different economic situations. You don't even live in those countries. Your ear's not to the ground. You don't even feel the effect. Like in the United States, like I can go to a restaurant right now and it's packed full of people. It doesn't feel like a recession. It doesn't feel like people are hurting yet. Well, what about Japan? Right? If you, and this, I love answering this question when people say, can you trade overnight? You can, but should you? And so the answer is all the things I'm saying. I'm giving you a very elaborate explanation. I love when people ask that because it's a, I love when you ask that, Rowan. There is a million... I'm, there's a million reasons not to. There's zero reasons to do so. Um, futures should be utilized overnight if you need a last minute hedge. That's my only thing. If you're in long positions in US equities and the market's collapsing overnight and you are like, shit, if it goes down like another percent, I'm in a margin call, I'm fucked. Well, you have some cash left. You can shorten equivalent ratio of futures and get in and get out and manage a position overnight to buffer your um, your cash sweep so that you don't lose anything, i.e. you can neutralize your position by shorting um, futures to maintain your, um, your account uh, balance overnight. So it's a great to jump into like a last minute hedge or if like the equities market closes and you're in a, a long portfolio and Apple's got earnings that day and all of a sudden you want to make sure that you don't get nuked because you're very overexposed to Apple, we can go out there and short some NASDAQ futures or something. Some NASDAQ micros just to buffer your loss a little bit. Because it's, it's gonna be hard to liquidate stock position overnight, especially after an earnings report, but you can easily liquidate futures overnight. The only benefit to trading futures overnight is you can liquidate your position and get in really quick. Stocks can be hard to get in, hard to get out. So that the only reason to ever touch futures, US futures overnight that are incongruent with your market being open. If you wanna trade overnight futures, and Japan's the market that's open, then you trade Japanese futures if you have access to that. And you understand their economy. So you have to treat each time that you're trading as this is who has the spotlight on them and who matters. If our futures are trading down because China's trading down, some days that happens, some days our futures don't care. Our futures loosely listen to that. Sometimes it's more sensitive to that. Reason why is because, well, if JP Morgan is liquidating all their assets, they're gonna liquidate all things at the same time. If Japan's just selling because a bunch of hedge funds are selling Japanese stocks. Our futures may not care about that. If it's, in a, if it's a global company selling in all three environments, then they're gonna be lowering the bid across the board. So the reason it sometimes works, sometimes doesn't, you just have to kind of know. And if you don't know the economy or the situation going on um, around the world, you're gonna have a hard time predicting why their markets or knowing why their market's selling off and not. Now, if we had overnight if we had hedge pressures and liquidity maps for those markets now that's another ball game if we had the ability to get options data for foreign markets outside the u.s and create hedge pressures for like the hang Seng index and the nikki 225 like the or the sorry the shanghai composite uh the dax i mean that would be next level futures if 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 European markets are crashing because the DAX broke through hedge pressure, then of course our market's probably gonna fall with it. You know what I'm saying? That'd be great to have European hedge pressures and Asian hedge pressures. But but the real the real reality is is that since you're so detached from what's going on and understanding why and you're committed overnight to moves that may or may not even attach to our market, it's a completely fruitless effort to try to make trades over here. Now we do have overnight hedge pressures to assist and when our market supposedly falls apart, but even so, it's better to wait till you have more data inside of a market you understand, get your ear to the ground and you understand what's going on and feel what's going on. You go to work every day. Are you seeing people getting laid off? Okay, then, and the market's at all time highs and start getting scared, right? You can, you can have that intuition as a trader, as the, as the environment you're in, and also reveal certain things right to you as a, as a trader like gosh like everybody i know is talking about this thing called crypto and i've never seen it used anywhere and now like the dumb people i work with are like buying opening up accounts to buy crypto this feels like a bubble you're not going to have that feeling if you're not trading a market that you're not 
saturated in and understand what's going on. Like if you were walking down the streets, Kyoto, and you saw that a bunch of signs were popping up saying, you know, restaurants close, closing down, going out of business, you would, f you would natively feel the pains of the recession and therefore you'd know how that, how that would, build, how that, that would react or sorry, how you would react in the market. But see like, so trading overnight futures here, I don't know anything that's going on around the world. So it would be hard for me to really trust or understand anything. You'd be just purely trading on technicals, which is a failed concept to begin with. But a great question. I love, I love when people talk about overnight futures. I'm, I should make a recorded video out of that because it's a very, I'm, futures allows you to do that, but there's really no good reason to. But the main reason is that uh, minus other markets being so out of, and I learned this when I used to trade oil. Because oil is a global thing and you have to pay attention to the world 24 seven. Russia has problems. There goes oil, you know, like, like uh, Saudi Arabia has problems. There goes oil. It's like, you're paying attention 24 seven, all these economies and all these power struggles and all the rate cuts and all the OPEX. And at the time there's an OPEC, a NOPEC. Now there's a BRICS. It, it just becomes a lot of work to trade one thing that you're also not really connected to because you know the real power of like commodities trading comes in the spot dealers down here like you have or spot traders you have oil dealers real physical traders who know the market because they're buying and selling all day long to people that need oil you're just staring at charts right so like commodities have a disadvantage not having those quants and they're feeding you data from the actual spot world so i was like okay that's and that's step all night too. And it just became better when I started trading US markets during US market hours. So much easier, easier to understand than I create a system that lets me see the positional spread. You know, there's no underlying commodity in S&P futures, it's a cash settled instrument. So we don't have to worry about a spot market. We just have to worry about the S&P tracking the stocks it tracks. And then I build all these tools to do that. So I created everything I needed for the world I'm in. So I, I just learned that like committing all night, and this is from experience too, like getting in a trade, wanting to trade overnight, looks like it's gonna rally overnight, let me get in. And I'm in the, I'm in the trade all night long. It's one o'clock, two o'clock in the morning, market starts selling off. And then you're like, shit, I better drink some coffee. Then you get up and then eight o'clock, nine o'clock comes in the morning, it's time to get up and stream or how to get up and trade. And then you're just on no sleep. It, it just slowly deteriorates your life. And if you have friends and family, I just say, do your work for like two hours in the morning as a trader and take the rest of the day to do anything else. Maybe brush up on your trading skills, maybe have a hobby, but don't ever sacrifice family time or personal time in the evenings to gamble on what's normally noise for six hours. Hopefully I scared all of you out of ever making trades overnight because it is just a if you do and you tell me you do, no offense, I'll tell you that you're dumb. I'll, I should probably make a recording of that. Like, I like to show like why, from my personal experience, I learned that I was just stressing myself out and wasting my time. Um, I built the overnight dynamics to help and assist with overnight trading. But in reality, you, your win rate is much better and controlled if you have more data, right? And so having liquidity maps in the morning just makes it infinitely better than the overnight dynamic estimates, which are great, but they're, they're just one piece of the puzzle.
great question. I love that. Thanks for asking, Ron, because I, a lot of people ask that and a lot of people try to do that, especially people like in trader funding programs and things like that. I'll just tell you, over time, even if you had a great system, over time, you're doing so much extra work. That's the, that, the reason I talk about other markets. Even if you had equal amounts of data, both sides, you still have to understand the environment you're in that you're trading. And while the market is moving lower, not because our market's supposed to move lower, it's moving lower because if you see right here, this is when China's market closes, right when Germany's market opens, right, right inside of here. And so you see European markets are selling. You're gonna have to study what they're doing and listen to their news and their news events and pay attention to their central banks and, and listen to their releases. Like we, you know how we always get together on Fed data, listen to it. Well, you gotta get together on, on those too. So you're, you're committing to be an expert at another market that's open. Like here's, here's Japan, China, here's European session. You're, you're committed to, um, learning other markets. It's better just to learn one. And since we have more data in USA, it's better. And you get your, you get bigger moves in us markets during us hours. So you can make your trade in a much, much, much shorter window. But yeah, all the reasons in the world to not trade overnight. It's to be used sparingly as I always teach people as a hedge if needed, which is very useful actually. And like I said earlier, um, if you're trading and it's earnings season and you wanted to gamble an apple, you made a mistake and the apple's tanking after the call, there's no way for you to, to get out of it, right? The futures will be, you know, you'll be able to easily get in and out of futures or much, much easier, not, not super easily, but easier certainly than equities in the overnight session. So, you know, or at the end of the day, you know, market closes and you have 15 minutes till the report comes out or whatever. Uh, you still got your options positions, you know, whatever you're doing. And you're like, shit, I should probably put a stop loss in. I forgot to put a stop loss. Well, go ahead and short some futures. There's a stop loss for you. Now you've buffered a downside loss. You've actually frozen your account relatively equal. Like if you can figure out how much to short. Now, again, it's complex because you'll need to know how many micros or whatever you need to do. But, but either case, you, you can go in there and, squat and and put out a fire by neutralizing your position. That makes sense. Uh, uh, trading out. Yeah, and Simon nailed it because it's like, I thought about trading after hours because I can. And that's exactly what most all of us do. It's like, oh, cool, you know? Man, I had a shitty trading day. Markets are selling off. I had a loss. Okay, market's open again. Let me get back in on a new trade. Let me try the long now. We always have that like revenge mentality before we go to sleep. And I always tell you, if you lose a trade and you need to get your revenge, you're, you're doomed already, right? Pretend you traded yesterday, you were long, you took a huge loss. And then the market was green toward, or it was trading up towards the end of the day. And then the market opens up. You're like, okay, finally, I'm gonna long now because I'm gonna get that rally that I missed out on yesterday. I've slipped in that mistake so many times too. You need to sleep after a loss after a day and then wake up the next day forgetting about it because how many how many folks could have long took a stop this happened and then missed out on that and then you're now it's 6 p.m you're like okay now i was right yesterday let me get on the long now and then all of a sudden you're staying up all night drinking coffee and then this happens and you blow up your account you tend to make like more stupid decisions if you don't sleep between losing days and a next day as well. So just because you can doesn't mean you should. I, I'm glad you said that, Simon. That's exactly why I got into it. It's like, oh, I can. I might as well give it a shot. But it's always good to have a life and it's always good to come in. Yeah, this is futures. Um, and so everybody, honestly, just, uh, just sorry, um, letting everybody know if you do not have uh, these DD band break alerts, you have to be in the Pro Plus package. And somebody asked me that earlier. And so we are doing a special on the Pro Plus. We, we did it when we launched. Um, the Pro Plus is $200 a month. Now we are, we did change our prices um, to make them go up. And so it's 200 a month. However, um, right now there is a reduced price special to make it 139 a month. So um, 
very inexpensive for the platform, your data feed access, and then all the coaching and training that you get in house is probably cheaper than some discords you get. And this comes with the full trading platform. So um, it's that when we had that hundred dollar deal for the longest time, we said, get in before it's over. Now it's 139, get in before it's over. You got a couple months on that. Uh, and we might have a new package come out. So anybody that's in pro plus now is grandfathered into the highest package. we create like pro plus extreme or another higher level package. If you are in, you automatically get boosted to the highest package if you're in pro plus now. So that's how we've always rewarded people. Early birds get the worm. Some people got pro plus for 50 bucks and people got it lifetime for 1500 bucks. And a long time ago, we were just making the first app. We had a, we had a thing that lifetime was 1500 bucks. You bought, now it's 3000. So if you get in early before the prices go up, you get rewarded for life. So now everyone got a free waltz to pro plus when we released it, that was lifetime and monthly memberships and stuff. A long ass time ago. And then we had some deals to make like pro plus was like 2200 bucks last year. And now it's the deal goes to 25. So as we make more features, the price go, but if you lock in the monthly rates. You guys will never have a price raise. So that's good. And just because the company is getting bigger, you know, we're building more stuff and hiring more people. So we're at to support more features, more server things. It's a little more expensive, the, the bigger we build it. And like this week's a milestone because of our 25, 25th, uh, team member on the org chart, which is cool. I thought it was just a little old me sitting in a, in a in a basement here building this thing. Rocket Scooter Corporation now has 25 people on his payroll on our roster. We have developers in three different countries. We have European developers, United States developers. Indian developers, so we're developing around the clock. We have a server hosting team. We have community manager, customer community service, tech support, all those things. So in a crazy year. So we appreciate you guys supporting the platform and of course that the UX team that designed the brand new face has been great. I think we've pretty much, we're going to hire three more developers this year. And I think that's pretty much all we need for a while. Those of you hopefuls out there that have your own trade rooms, that have your own communities, that have your own indicators, your own algorithms, here's what we have for you in store for you. We're going to have the ability starting um, in the next couple months. Rocket Scooter is going to be the biggest, it's gonna be the, the name brand in retail trading as we build this out. We have so many interested parties already. Uh, and what we're doing is we're building a massive marketplace that solves all the problems that other marketplaces have, like what TradingView does and other things. You can't go out there and, and, and share. I can't go build hedge pressure on TradingView You'd all want to know how it works. Even if I could, you, I, I couldn't even actually train you would be powerful enough with PineScript to do so. But even if it was, I couldn't go out there and create my tools and train you and distribute it. So we built a server infrastructure that you can code on a console. We'll have our own coding script. You know, like there's PineScript for training. We're writing something called Rocket Script. Rocket Script allows the ability for you to go in in your own local environment and create tools and indicators and then submit them to the server for display on your platform on the front end. That way you can create a business or sell your tools through our platform and nobody will know how it works. You'll never see how hedge pressure works. This is all calculated on the server and it opens a web socket process. This is a unique technology that I invented that is unique to the world. Uh, and so a lot of vendors out there that have their stuff on tasty trade and think or swim and trading view are like, wait, you can hide my secret sauce code. And I'm like, yes, we can. So we're going to have the ability for you to white label a rocket scooter platform for your own brand. We'll have the ability for you to put in your own tools in the back end, just like we have indicators here, hedge pressure shows up. Um, we have a programming team that'll create all the things for you. You have a console for you to code your own indicators for yourself. If you make anything just for fun and you want to distribute it to your friends, you can do it that way as well without people knowing 
the research or the outputs or things like that. So uh, with that, you know, any of our vendors and people on our team obviously will get uh, a lot of other cool things that go with it. Like you'll be able to be part of our marketing efforts. You'll be part of our podcast spaces. We'll feature you and all the people that are in our group will use Rock Scooter as a vehicle to host their tools on. So that's a huge up for our, our, our company. What we're actually going to focus most of our energy on this year is variety. Like you might like to buy Matt's liquidity map and I'm just going to pick some names. Louis badass balls of steel long strategy chase reads irrational rules that he made for himself members can actually go in there in the highest level package for instance like pro plus lifetime will get free access i don't, don't quote me on that but we we're discussing example is pro plus lifetime will get free access to the console you'll be able to create your own tools um to a degree and essentially it's like opening up a coding environment and typing in uh, your indicator and creating indicators. You can mix and match different things. You can add rocket scooter hedge pressure to any of your other tools to make them better. Um, it'll be a lot similar to like what you see on thinkorswim. You got to thinkorswim, hit control E and there's like a little edit studies and strategies window that pops on this all local on your machine. Like if, if I created something called like, uh, let's pick up, pick up running. Let's just pick up a, there's 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 so there's somebody's super secret recipe that's their indicator and here it is i can see it so you won't be able to have anyone see your tools it's going to be a very similar thing to that you'll have a list of tools that you can make you'll be able to code in rocket script your own code you'll be able to click test locally deploy a small chart so that you can see what your output would look like to a user and if you like everything you can deploy, it'll do all the server backups for you and version histories and things. One click deployment and testing environment. You'll be able to access that with the highest membership of a lifetime, um, probably for free, um, to be able to create indicators for yourself. Now we don't know if it's gonna be on the console or we'll have a version on the front end to create indicators for yourself. We're still discussing that, so don't quote me on any of this, but we're trying to figure out that. But it's gonna be for sale for vendors. Like if you have a business or a trade room or an indicator algorithm you wanna distribute, You'll be able to put it on our platform and we'll keep your code secure. Actually, I won't have access to it. Only you'll have access to that secure environment. So that's what I built. And we're going to focus on that. So that way when people come here and they're like, yeah, I like liquidity map, but I, what, you know, it's not my style of trading. Maybe it's more day trading like some, well, we have hundreds of other things you can shop around for. So liquidity map is going to be a feature that comes native with Rock Seeker platform, but you'll have other abilities too. Or other tools, member made tools, vendor made tools. You'll be able to share your own rule sets with each other. All that stuff is the bigger, the bigger push. So like a more interactive platform. Um we have the AI assist and back testing a lot of neat things. Yeah, you'll be able to use Oswaldo. This that's that is the goal. So you can use our outputs as input. So if, and like in rocket script, if you type, um, like, um, an example would be, um, Mac, D, Mac D plus you make an indicator and it says you take the two moving averages and subtract them. And if the Mac D is ascending and head and price greater than HP, like you'll be able to call HP as a, as a subroutine or a function, then go. It could be a conditional statement as well as pull the numerical values. So only trigger my signal if we're above hedge pressure. Don't trigger my signal if it's a hedge pressure break. You'll be able to not only use the logic of the, the conditionals above or below, but you'll also hopefully be able to import the rule state. If spy hedge break is yellow, then do this. It, else if green, then do this. So yeah. I know that's, uh, that's, that to me was, was one of the inspiring things that came from you guys can like, I want to write my own scripts using hedge pressure. I want to combine hedge pressure with something else I do. And you kind of all manually do it now, but now we'll let you guys script it. We're going to have a front end language. We'll click a, a module here. So the idea is that you'll have the server based and the front end. If you want to make something for yourself, I, I misspoke earlier. It's gonna be on the front end. You'll have a rocket script module. It'll just open up. You can create an indicator. It saves it locally on your machine for you to have. If you want to distribute it to other people, 
you'll need to upload it to the console, um, which an automated process will create a black box for you. And once we analyze it for conformity, then it would release. Now that's one of the bigger problems is you injecting code on our servers. It has to be limited code and limited functionality. Like you can't inject raw code to our servers and, and start hacking and crashing stuff. So it'll be scripts that our AI robot will have to read the script and make sure the integrity is good. Make sure you're not creating like infinite loops that would crash the server and things like that. Um, and tests for basic conformity and stress tests. Like when you click deploy, It'll go through a process to make sure your indicator meets the standards of release, and then you can release it to others. So sharing your tools with others, yada, yada, will be available. So you want to make something and give it to the community. That could be something that like Lifetime can have probably access to something like that. You can't sell it, but you can make something to share with your friends. Um, if you want to code something for yourself, you'll have a module here to do it locally. If you want to become a vendor, you can pay for the right to host your business here. Essentially, we're going to make TradingView and Ninja Trader and all these other marketplaces 100% obsolete. As Ashton is hinting in the announcements, we will be a household name. We are already getting a lot of interest in this technology because of that. Don't worry, we're still going to be here building this cool shit for you guys at the same time. But the idea that we want to be able to mix different styles and have more variety is is very important. Is if we're rounding off our strategy, right? We almost have everything automated. Once we get red lines in, risk intervals in, uh, for like or fix risk interval rule in, and some of those other rules, as soon as those are done, we're not gonna create any more techniques or indicators for ourselves. We're gonna create more modules for ourselves. The, the AI assist, the rule assist, the statistical back test, all of those things will be different features in the platform. So for you to get more variety in your trading, obviously we need more stuff for y'all to play with. So other people will be able to come in here and host their things. Or if you want to make Oswaldo, Oswaldo platform, you can white label our platform and have your own version of it. So if you have like your super secret algo that you sell to clients or whatever, you have a trade room and you have some indicators you have on trading view that people come and buy them from you. How about have your own platform with your own tools in it and people can't see how it works. That's, that'll be something that we'll have uh, this year. So optimizing the platform first, uh, a separate team is going to be building connections to different brokers as time goes by. Rhythmic, new charts, things like that. We're going to have like, you know, TD interactive brokers and connect all of them as we can. Um, and another team's gonna build these modules. So we got these three big projects going out. And then our 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 current team, we're gonna finish automating all of our tools, red lines, yellow lines, all that stuff. Uh, cannot do automated trading, and there's a reason that a lot of people don't do that uh, in the platform industry. A couple of reasons. Number one, there's liability. Uh, if you click the button, then it's your responsibility. If something goes wrong an automated script like we glitch out and your automation doesn't work then you could sue us for liability a lot of people don't take it for that reason another thing is that uh, the current data package we're in for futures um, it doesn't allow automated trading to begin with the futures industry is very strict on that that's why a lot of futures platforms you're not you can't really automate your own trading now ninja trader and a few others have you know paid extraordinary amounts of money for that for that gate to be open and so if if that's your business model it is it's not ours so if you assume the liability the exchange makes you like pay for the right to do that and you have to like classify yourself differently than than just an informational platform like we're like an informational platform where we just display candles and we just let you see it and you have to manually push the button if there was an automation that allowed you to automate the actual trade we become a different type of software at that point. And then it's a whole different new regulation and different things. And we're not going to go that path, but not because of that, because I'd love to have all the options available. It's more for the liability. Um, like when Tom Sosloff made think or swim, he personally didn't believe in, in, in automated trading. So that's why he didn't add it to 
that ability. You can create signals that would tell you on the screen, buy and sell, buy and sell, but it limited to that. You still had to manually push the button. And his reason was different than mine. His reason, if you talk to him, is about just not believing in that being, he wanted you to trade manually just because he's old school like that. But in all honesty, it's, it's, it's a liability thing. And, and y'all, you understand how that works, right? I'd love to do it though. In a perfect world, if we were all geeks and y'all didn't blame me at the platform hook, hook has a hookup and, or, you know, some, some glitch happens and you infinitely sell your account to negative And it's just a huge fallout on, on technical errors. And it's, it's hard for companies to assume that liability because we don't have control over the script. Like if I had my, my business was automated trading bot and you just subscribed and deposited money and it automatedly automated the trading process for you then my entire career would be focused on making sure that thing doesn't fail. And we would have entire checks and balances to make sure the code works and there's no glitches. And we'd have testing and testing and testing before any release, but because you can create your own script and it can, we have no control over that. And you can introduce a bug that's hard to trace. It can interact funkily with something else. Then whether it is your fault or our fault, it's fallout for us anyways. And so ultimately our decision was to not pursue that route. But we'll let you literally create your own signals that'll put the word buy on the chart. Like, like you want to, you want a smiley face right here, a little emoticon that says buy. You want a frowny face here that says sell and print it on your chart, whatever. We'll, we'll have you print buy and sell signals on the chart all day long, just like you can with any other platform. So you can automate your entries and exits through signals, but you still have to move your mouse and push the button. Can you have your face? You can have my face. Yes, you can. As a matter of fact, um, I'm going to hire an entire team to make not only one, but a thousand emojis of the matte face because Ashton, they made this, uh, they made me one of these caricature <laughs> versions of my, my face at the Stevie Oki concert, the Bitcoin conference. That's where the reflection in the glasses actually is. Um, and then, yeah, oh, that's, that's yours truly. And they even got the Apple watch and they even got the necklace I was wearing. They even got the V-neck shirts. All I ever wear is V-neck shirts. How'd y'all know? It's like, you guys, you guys know me too well. Literally, I have the same shirt in like 80 different colors. I swear to God. My favorite shirt. That's hilarious. I buy the Miles, the Miles V-neck from John Barbados. I've got it in like every color. I've got like three or four different black ones. This, I guess this is my version of the Steve Jobs turtleneck. I just like, I don't know, I just like wearing plain v-neck shirts. That's hilarious though. And I, and I, I'm not a bougie guy. Like I don't, I don't own a Rolex. I don't, I don't go waste money on stupid shit. I have an Apple watch. I live a pretty frugal life. I only waste my money on computers, computer stuff and, and tech stuff to support the stream. <laughs> Rock Scooter merch is going to be V-neck shirts. Oh, hell yeah. That's right. That is correct. And I never really noticed it until Kind of like resilience is still floating negative, so I really don't have any any entry points or any reason to do anything. Just kind of watch, you know, watch things and let it let it settle out. So it's not pushing positive. So now this is a good time to think about, uh, could be a head pressure break to fill the gap like you took about this morning. Yeah, some volume coming through. Like you said, flow failure is random. This is a very random noisy day. 
looking good. All right, you guys. Um, question going forward. All right, so those of you that use elite trader funding, um, we're likely going to be working with them going forward as well. Um, and we'll get a rhythmic connection to the platform. You'll be able to trade your ETF accounts in the platform. Uh, we'll have a, a code for you if you do ETF and it's likely to give you a discount. So when we make that announcement, uh, for those of you using Elite Trader Funding, feel free to utilize our code um, for your Trader Funding program. Oh, nice. I might kick that off by doing some evals myself. We'll see. But that's going to be something we'll probably kick off. And it's an early announcement, but it'd be in it. I can't wait to get our you know, rhythmic connection in there so I can do that trading inside the platform. That'd be great. All right. Big announcements, big things coming through. Again, let the market, you know, kind of starting to heal itself today, breaking hedge pressure. Uh, my calls tap in the upper close um, on resilience being positive. So that we talked about this morning was resilience works its way positive. As long as it stays positive, there's a chance we break through hedge pressure and keep pushing. I don't really bet any further than that. But again, DD float failure is random. So know that the behavior is random from here. Um, we're going to call it a day. Um, come back in about an hour and a half or so. I'll make an announcement. We'll have a, a Zoom call like just we had before. Pro Plus members only come to the Zoom call. Are y'all liking that Zoom call every day? I know we kind of make it like a different topic. We're redoing some of the videos and things, but we're gonna make sure it's worth your time. Definitely, definitely awesome to have that. And the recordings are posted there if you can't make it. So those of you who want to upgrade to Pro Plus, send me a message now. You gotta get in while you can. Lock in that low price that doesn't go up. And uh, chill with us. Yeah. As we lock and open all these features, we're glad to have y'all. I'm glad to have you support the group, support the drive, and all these big things we're building this year. It's going to be revolutionary. At least knowing the trading platform role has come close to making some of the stuff we're going to make. So I'm excited to build it. Things we've all wanted all of our lives as traders. If you have friends, you know people, maybe you're part of another trade room, they have a tool set or an indicator or something they do, send them to us, send, them, send me a name. I'd love to talk to them and, and share with them our platform and uh, you know, hopefully get our, our word out there as well to other people that make stuff just like us. We made something. We have a community of other cool people that make something. We have all the cool make somethings of the planet inside of Rocket Scooter where you come here and this is the good stuff, right? All the good tools, unique tools out there and we hopefully can get them all on the platform. Um, so feel free to let me know if y'all have friends out there that'd be interested in something like that as we're building that out now. Okay, love you guys. We'll see y'all in a couple hours.